and he's been pretty darn good in that role. Six appearances for Tanner, zero on that ERA, but numbers you don't see on that graphic, five strikeouts and just one walk for Tanner through his six innings pitched. I caught up with the Nationals right-hander a couple days ago to talk about the biggest factor in his success so far. Uh, the biggest thing so far has been uh, obviously limiting the walks. I mean, stay in the zone, make guys beat you stringing hits together as opposed to putting guys on. And then one or two hits that turns into minimizing damage and makes things a lot easier. So controlling the walks, is that a matter of having better commands, maybe setting your sights more to the middle of the plate and letting the movement kind of take it to the, the corners? Or how do you, what, what has led to the decrease in walks, do you think? A little bit of both. Uh, definitely staying more set up middle of the plate, for sure. Uh, try not to move too much. Because then, I mean, obviously you move to the corner. If you miss it all, you're off the plate. So working maybe thirds as opposed to on the lines. Uh, and then just trying to be more repeatable in the delivery whether that's dialed back a little bit or working to find a way to get everything moving at the right speed and being able to repeat that every pitch. Yeah, we talked about this recently that you've still got the ability to throw 98, 99, but you're almost happy to live in that 96 sort of velo area if it allows you to be able to repeat your mechanics a little bit more. Talk us through that thought process and maybe it just being a kind of evolution of a young pitcher sort of thing and, and realizing who you are and where you need to live and where, where your strengths are. Yeah, I mean, there's not much of a thought process to it other than uh, if you go back and look, 2020, I had a pretty good year and same thing. A lot of the, a lot of my outings were that 96, 97 range. There wasn't a ton of like overthrow. And yeah, there was times where I would flash 98, 99 here and there, but I would pitch more at 96 and everything felt better under control. And I had, that was the year of my career with the least amount of walks. And to the date, my, uh, my best year so far. Let's talk about the closer role. Um, you've kind of had opportunities to save games in the past, but you haven't been locked in as like the everyday sort of closer. Uh, this is something that you, you told me on the field here uh, earlier on in the homestand is something that you take pride in, that you want to be a big league closer. Um, what's it been like to just have Davey trust you in that role and to be able to deliver when called upon. Oh, it's, it's been great so far. And yeah, I obviously want that role, but still, I mean, to this date, I mean, sixth, seventh inning comes around, I'm down there stretching, moving around, whether it's the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, whenever I get the ball, I still got one job and that's get guys out. When you made, so you started out as a starter, as, as most pitchers do, when you made the move from starter to reliever, um, did you think that the closer role could be one that you could occupy one day? What what were your your goals for moving to the bullpen and, and where you wanted to go with that? But that was the, the goal for sure. Uh, coming out of college, I was a closer. I played first every day, so that's all I did was come in. I would throw one inning and then be done. And I enjoyed the being in there every day or having the possibility of being in there every day as opposed to starter. You're on a five-day rotation. Mm -hmm. It's You're sitting around for four days. Yeah, you watch the game. You can learn things from the game, but you're not in there. You don't have a chance to get into the game. So for me, moving back to the bullpen, Obviously, back into the bullpen was a goal, but being back in that situation where I had a chance to be in the game every day was big for me. We talked last spring, I believe, about your slider. And um, I'm curious, you know, you, you've got a split that you have messed around with a little bit as well. Has it always been predominantly fastball slider with you, or have you kind of evolved your repertoire over the course of your, your pitching career dating back to college and all that? As long as I can remember pitching, which wasn't long before college, uh, it's always been fastball slider. Mm. And the slider I throw now is the same slider I threw when I was 21 years old in college. Like, that's always been the grip. That's always what my thought process was with it, mm -hmm. to throw it. So, I mean, it may have, I think it's better now than it was then, mm -hmm. more consistent at least. Uh, but as far as what I think and how I hold it and how I go about everything with it, that's all the same as far as I can remember back. When you've been healthy, you've, been good at, at the major league level. You've dealt over the last couple of years with some various health things. How did you approach this year from a, a physical standpoint to put yourself in a position where you can hopefully go a full year, not have any of the blips and, you know, post every day? I went to, uh, I was in PT for the last two months of the off season mm. with no injury, just, just in PT, making sure everything was strong, ready to go, mm. making sure that there was no hiccups 
as soon as I got into spring. I was a little slower building up uh, this year. I came in a little bit behind where I actually thought I would be, but at the same time, I wasn't trying to push it with the lockout and everything going on. I didn't want to have to ramp up too fast and knowing three weeks would be enough to get pretty close to where I needed to be and it all worked out and healthy so far.